Hello my Sock Universe, to another, yeah, how can we get out of this Corona thing uh, with the leaks being suspended and stopped at the moment, what would be options to finish it quickly, this time the La Liga edition, edition, not edition, um, first of all let me tell you uh, again, if you can take please the instructions of your government serious, stay home if you can. Uh, if you have a job to do and it's vital for you, I mean in Austria only uh, vital uh, jobs meaning anything to do with groceries, um, um, pharmacies and, and so on, uh, public transportation, those are vital jobs. Uh, they cannot be done elsewhere, but anyone else basically has to stay home. Um, also, let me say that while to me soccer is important, uh, and I have and all sports kind of whatever I'm working is kind of connected to that. So, uh, being closely related in my job with the betting industry, but to be honest, the most important thing is that we all get healthy. So whatever I'm talking about now here is also contingent on the realization that uh, getting the soccer league started again is not the most imminent thing that we need to do. We first have to see everyone healthy. Do we get through this crisis? Can we take into account, uh, you know, how can we avoid a potential second wave breaking out and all those kind of considerations that I think uh, many have not on their mind at the moment. So, you know, those are things. Uh, will our health system work properly? Will we, can we avoid a downfall as in Italy and so on? So these things are definitely more important than getting a soccer league started. I also think that before any soccer leagues are starting and before we allow fans into the stadiums, uh, we need to be clear that there are no of all the new um, ways that we can have mass gatherings and avoid the spread of a virus. I, mean, I think that's vital. And the other thing is, first, we need to get our daily lives back running. As serious as I mean, the economy is taking a big hit. Yes, soccer clubs are part of this economy. But as I said, uh, any entertainment side or whatever, is maybe not the most prevalent thing to get started starting up again. Uh, I'm not much in favor of the current Austrian government. I have to say they're handling it rather well. And they said it rightly, step by step, we have to increase it. The other thing is, and that might be now depressing news, um, a German virologist said, given all the spread and we don't know how it spreads and whether there will be, will be second wave, it's not realistic to think that uh, our leagues will start up in May again. He even suggested it's not even realistic that it will happen this year. Because if a second wave is coming, and he kind of mentioned October, then we have the whole shutdown again and uh, we need to actually prevent that so from happening. So actually, uh, he said the most realistic thing is start 2021. At which point I'm thinking, uh, you know, this might be uh, stupid, then count this year is cancelled and then we'll start up in March of 21, exactly where we left off. Uh, we, have, we would have to figure out in this case, what do we do with players that are out of contract do they automatically extend and all those kind of considerations also the big question for me would be how many soccer clubs would still be up and running at that point because without any government help i think there will be so much uh revenue lost and you know you have to play the players and all that kind of stuff. i'm i'm afraid uh that the longer the soccer league stands still this will have a huge impact on the entire uh, industry surrounding it. But hey, uh, again, it's not the most important. And I think the same thing is true for all the other sports that are out there. I mean, it's not only all on the soccer. And while I do a channel on soccer and I mostly follow soccer, um, I'm a fan of many other sports as well, uh, particularly hockey, ice hockey in Europe. 
and American football and those uh, sports, I think, yeah, we have to see how it goes. Uh, where the season will pass, last I saw in the NBA, uh, they hope to maybe play August or whatever because they can. Hockey, not so much. Let's see with the NFL and MLB going, but you know, uh, those leagues are at least used to make shortened season because of uh, player strikes and whatever. So yeah, let's see. We have to take it day by day seriously and at the moment the big discussion is in anyway um if the leagues are playing they will play probably playing behind closed doors to just finish so we have to all see that we're talking about la liga today uh and i know la liga has said they will do the utmost to finish the league blah 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 you know uh this was at the beginning of the week that i heard that it all seems, you know, when, whenever everything is developing, uh, those statements sound very much hollow to me, like the same thing as I said about the Premier League and in light of uh, some experts thinking that we might not have soccer. Let's see how it will go. I'm assuming now, for now, uh, Spain has 11 rounds left to play. That's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Uh, 11 rounds in two months is almost not possible. The advantage that Spain has is that they don't have the Copa del Rey. Uh, they only have the final to play, uh, which is one game. So that is not too bad of a proposition. Um, the There are also there are quite some teams still in Europe available. But we, as I said, I really think that finishing the Champions League in the Europa League is not a priority. If you want to finish something, finish the local leagues. So having said that, Spain in that sense is in a slightly better position as England. But they have to play two more rounds. And I, that's not uh, what, in, uh, what we had in England. Although Spain has a true title race at the moment. Uh, with It's a two-horse race between Barcelona and Real Madrid. So... We have to see. I'll do the same thing as, uh, that I suggested yesterday for England. Um, we take the current table, and again, top four goes Champions League, next three go in the Europa League, then we have a whole bunch that go nowhere, and then the bottom three are relegated. Uh, my first suggestion suggestion is again this 6-6-8 six, six, split that I think would work great for Italy. And again, Italy is in such a mess that we don't even know if they will be able to start it up all that soon, but who knows but yeah let's say six six eight uh in this case i'm splitting and i again i'm only counting the matches between the top six the next six and the bottom eight so everything else uh was only account count for in determining these little leagues uh these mini leagues kind of and as we can see this also reduces the games quite considerably for most of these and let's order them now within these leagues and we see that in the top league we would have suddenly Real Madrid clear three points clear with two matches to play and Barcelona has two matches to play so one win for Real Madrid would seal their title it's a little bit too short to to be honest and uh, I said it uh, yes 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 yesterday this might be a last resort uh, to 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 us. Also, what I don't like is Real Sociedad in this uh, case has six games played only, so they would have to play four more games. They have also the Spanish Cup final, and Bilbao, the opponents, also would have um, three more uh, games plus the Cup Cup final. So that's kind of a little bit unfair. I would, in one way, love to have it this way, but I think um, it might be too short. This is really the last ditch resort, and again, I would do a playoff for the last Champions League spot, so if the so take the last three from the uh, Primera División uh, La Liga A, if you want, uh, and then the top team from La Liga B, so in this case, if the standings would remain as they are, who knows if they will be, especially if you li uh, look at La Liga B, where uh, Valencia, six, po uh, six games, 12 points, Granada, six games, 10 points, then Bilbao, Seven uh, games with 10 points and also sooner eight games, 10 points. Very close then. Uh, seven games, eight points. It's uh, This is a super tight league. It would be actually super exciting to see how that will play out. But assume Valencia uh, wins that one and then uh, every, everything else remains the way it is. Although I would think that Real Sociedad might uh, leapfrog Atletico Madrid. 
but let's keep it the other way it is now. Then we would have Atletico play Valencia at home and Real Sociedad Getafe at home. And then the winner plays a home, 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 home game for the, uh, the highest seed will play a home game. Again, you can play a neutral venue however you like. Uh, this would be just my suggestion. And then in the bottom, um, I was a little bit surprised. The bottom three in this are Eibar, Espanyol and Celta Vigo. Espanyol is dead last in uh, La Liga at the moment, but here they are not dead last. They actually have a pretty good chance with quite some games in hand that they could get out, out, out of it. And Celta seemingly makes a lot of points against uh, the uh, top 12 uh, and not so much against their immediate rivals. That was interesting. Also, look at how Alaves is doing really well. Mallorca also, but it's rather uneven. And, you know, in a League of Eight, you have 14 games, so there are a lot more games to be played. Um, in case of Espanyol, Celta Vigo, five uh, more rounds. Uh, I will take this into account because we have also the playoffs in the, um, the top R and B. Maybe more workable if you really can start in May. Maybe more workable would be to split it just in two. Uh, make two 10 team leagues and then yeah no no playoffs if we do that again only taking account against against each other and again not happy that it's rather uneven look Barcelona is on top uh no it's not even on top let's order it um Barcelona is two games ahead of Real Madrid and is level on points um and again in a 10 game league we would have uh, 18 games, so Barcelona would have five games left. We would have Real Madrid with six games left. That's workable, but it's rather uneven, and we have Real only with 11. So uh, maybe not ideal, but as I said, it would be wor workable. Um, I'm looking again at the two finalists, uh, Athletic Bilbao Real so that at least have 12 games each, so I think it would be uh, fairer in their case. Um, Real Madrid looks strong. Real Madrid makes points against the top teams and uh, drops more against the bottom teams. That's something we can definitely see from here. Also, look how well Bilbao is doing against the top teams uh, in comparison to the others. So I find this table quite in interesting. You see uh, Valencia similarly would be much uh, better if we are the only play against the top teams. Um, on the bottom, again, we have Vigo and Espanyol. On the bottom, Leganes uh, would be in there, but again, Espanyol has one game less than Leganes and Vigo even two games less. So this is also super tight. It would be a very, very tight race towards the bottom there. So yeah, this is my suggestion from, on how we could continue La Liga. I think given that we have the May scenario, the second, that uh, two leagues of 10 are the more realistic ones because there's a little bit more to play. Um, again, you could split and then either keep the points that they have, which I don't think would be good fair. Maybe half the points. Um, I don't know. What I think, um, 27 games is about two-thirds of a season. Maybe it would not be too bad to kind of say take the points and time 66% and then finish it out somehow like that. I think it is fairest. It's absolutely fairest uh, to take what has been played into account and then play it out and know the tables aren't even. This is my, that that's the big drawback that some teams would have more to play. But I think you could put these makeup games in the midweek somehow and with some smart scheduling you could get by that. Again, um, the first suggestion with 668 might be a little bit too short, but if there's really not much time, I think that should be the plan B. The one with the 10 leagues, I think, is workable. Um, I would not think that you can put 11 rounds in two months. But let's see about that. I saw we will talk maybe that in a frame when we talk about the French league. Uh, the French uh, soccer president, Legre, has suggested that yeah, let's postpone everything with all the counters and then we finish until uh, July 15th, if not July 30th. All has to be seen. Let me know if you had any ideas of how the leagues could finish with a more compact schedule or how you think uh, the leagues should finish, if at all. What would you be your solution or your preferred solution? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!